Hello everyone and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics and much much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks for our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible and we would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. Please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava. And today we are going to investigate a key concept in finance in general and efficient market hypothesis in particular that is law of one price, which is sometimes affectionately abbreviated as LOOP, standing for law of one price. And this concept is quite easy to explain and elaborate on. Basically it implies that the same asset, identical assets, should trade at same prices in different places and uh, it is the easiest to illustrate the law of one price and test it perhaps using dual listings that is stocks that have listings in various exchanges and perhaps the most famous example of such a stock has historically been Royal Dutch Shell that maintains a dual listing in London where the price is quoted in pence GB small p and in Amsterdam, where the price is quoted in euros. And we have got daily closing prices for London and Amsterdam listings of Royal Dutch Shell from uh, November 2018 until pretty much today, November 2020. And we have also got the daily exchange rates between the pound and the euro. So what we can do is we can convert the pound or pence share prices of Royal Dutch Shell uh, quoted in London in euros and see whether the prices are similar and how the discrepancies if some arise perform over time. So first of all in terms of the Amsterdam price we don't need to do anything we can just refer to the same price because it's already in euros and to convert the price in pence to the price in euros we first of all need to divide the price in pence by 100 to get the price in pounds and then multiply by the relevant exchange rate. And we can see already that in the very first uh, observation date, 26th of November 2018, the prices are different, albeit not by much, by only 4 euro cents. The price of the quote in London is 4 cents more expensive than the price quote in Amsterdam. And we can bottom right click both formulas all the way down to see how these differences ev evolve over time. And we can calculate these differences explicitly by subtracting the Amsterdam price in euros from the London price converted to euros and see how it evolves over time. And we get a very interesting picture if we look at mispricings, the differences between the London price and the Amsterdam price. Initially, from uh, November 2018, somewhere until the end of 2019 pretty much, the mispricings were going both directions and they were quite volatile and fluctuating in quite narrow ranges and always reverting back to roughly zero. But something quite surprising starts happening at the uh, start of 2020 when mispricings become quite persistent with the share price in London is quite much lower and consistently lower than the share price in Amsterdam. And obviously attentive uh, viewers could already attribute that to the uh, financial crisis that closely followed the pandemic situation globally. So maybe that's the reason why such dynamics of mispricings is observable. But to be exactly sure whether the law of one price holds or whether it doesn't hold, whether it broke, breaks down in 2020, we need to apply a very simple and insightful statistical tool that is the unit root test. And applying it to law of one price is very important to determine whether you can arbitrage on exploiting the differences in prices on various exchanges and bank on the differences in prices reverting back to zero, so obtaining a riskless profit from arbitrage. So whether the unit root test gives us the significant result means whether the law of one price holds or breaks down in a particular time period. So the essence of the unit root test is to calculate the difference of the difference between those two prices in euros. So difference between this difference and the difference in the previous day. And we 
calculated for every single sample period, and then we need to determine whether this difference depends on the lagged difference. So basically, we want this regression, this simple unit root test regression of the change in difference onto lag difference to have a significant and negative coefficient. That would imply that if you had a positive difference at a particular day, it will revert back to zero eventually as the coefficient would be negative and significant in terms of the change in difference. And if it was negative, then the change in difference would be positive, so this uh, mispricing would again be eliminated from the other direction. And that would imply that an arbitraging strategy that buys uh, an asset that is uh, undervalued at a particular exchange and short sells the asset that is overvalued at a particular exchange would obtain riskless profits. But to figure out whether these riskless profits could be obtained and whether the law of one price holds in general and in various subsamples, we have to apply the unit root test first. And it's really easy to apply it given the uh, template we have already established. So first of all, for the whole sample, we need to select a one by two array to get the coefficient and the standard error and then test whether it's significantly negative and apply the linest function to changes and differences and lagged differences. So going from the second last observation all the way to the very first observation over here. And we don't need the constant over here for the regression because we don't want any drift in the difference occurring because again, we're testing for the law of one price and we need the output to get the standard error of our coefficient. And we enforce this formula using shift control enter and we get a very much negative coefficient and a quite low standard error. If we convert it into a t-stat, dividing the coefficient by the standard error, we get minus 5.81, which is quite respectably high t-stat. And comparing it with the critical value for a 1% uh, significance threshold for a Dicke Fuller unit root test with no constant and no trend, we can establish that it is indeed significant by applying this simple logical function. So yes, this result is significant. And overall, over a two year period, we investigate the law of one price does hold with mispricings reverting back to zero and an arbitration strategy potentially being profitable. But what happens if we investigate the law of one price on subsamples? For example, let's investigate it on a sample period before 2020 began. So before 1st of January 2020. So here we can just copy that and paste it over here and limit our sample to only end at the end of 2019. So we can see here that 2019 ends roughly at row 279. So let's do just that. Let's limit our sample in the linest function to 279 over here and 278 in the lag difference respectively and enforce this formula using shift control enter. And we see that we have a much more pronounced coefficient in terms of magnitude and a slightly higher standard error. But if you convert it into a t-stat, you have a much higher t-stat, almost three times as high of a t-stat as in the previous case, meaning that the law of one price holds to a much greater extent in uh, 2018 and 2019 than in 2020. To calculate whether it holds in 2020, we need to apply the same procedure and here apply the linest function to a sample that started when 2020 began. So we start at row 280. So over here we start at row 280. So here we have to start at row 279 because it's lagged difference again. And we can apply shift control enter and see that the coefficient is much lower in magnitude than in this case and all the more so than in this case, meaning mispricings are not as quickly reversible as previously. And if we look at the comparison between the coefficient and the standard error, calculating the t-stat, we can see that this t-stat is lower in terms of magnitude than the critical value, meaning that the unit root test result is insignificant applying this logical function, we can clearly see that it's not significant, meaning that the law of one price actually breaks down during the 2020 period, given the turbulence on the financial markets and the uncertainty revolving the pandemic situation. 
But what about uh, returns of an arbitration strategy? Maybe statistically we do not see the law of one price, but an arbitrageur could still exploit it by, again, short selling the overvalued, more expensive stock at a particular exchange and buying, opening a long position on an undervalued stock at another exchange. So here we can see the returns of um, listings in London and Amsterdam respectively by just applying the simple formula price today divided by the price yesterday minus one and applying it for both listings for the whole sample period and then uh, figuring out what would be the return of a roughly risk-free arbitraging strategy. So here if our price in London in the previous day was higher than the price in Amsterdam the previous day, we need to long the Amsterdam stock and short sell the London stock. So we obtain such a difference in returns. And if it's the other way around, if the Amsterdam stock, the Amsterdam listing is pricier than the London listing, we do the reverse. We long the London stock and short the Amsterdam stock. And applying this simple formula, we can calculate what returns the arbitrage strategy would pre present to us over the course of these two year period. And then we can simulate investing 100 euros in that case into such an arbitraging strategy and seeing how does it perform over time and bottom like looking it all the way down and looking at the graph over here we can see that the same situation is quite well pronounced in terms of our arbitraging strategy payoff up until 2020 begins and pandemic risks become apparent the arbitraging strategy delivers quite notable returns and 100 euros invested in arbitraging on Royal Dutch Shell, London and Amsterdam listings at the end of November 2018 uh, is increasing to over 150 euros at the start of 2020. But then the payoff is flat. You do not gain anything from arbitraging from that point on. Again, evidencing that the law of one price is breaking down in 2020 and the market is becoming less efficient due to the uncertainty and investor irrationalities surrounding the pandemic. And this procedure, this procedure to testing the law of one price can be quite useful for investors that seek to arbitrage on multiple listings or just arbitraging on exploiting the law of one price in general. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions on videos for business economics or finance topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.